Yo, what's going on, buddy? This is Don't Talk Sports. My name is Dylan. In today's video, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be talking about the Cleveland Browns. And as you all have probably seen the news really recently, as we know, Sunday, the Cleveland Browns, they lost the game to Washington Commanders. And it was a bad loss. There's been a lot of people talking about Deshaun Watson needing to be cut, needing to be benched, something just get him out of town. Well, after that game, there was an interview with Kevin Spansky. And even these past couple days in the press, people have been kind of interviewing Kevin Spansky, interviewing different people from Deshaun Watson, all sorts of people on the team, players, other coaches, asking about Deshaun Watson. Like I said, specifically with Kevin Spansky. Spansky asking if he should be or asking if Deshaun Watson should be benched and there was some I wouldn't say awkward but just unusual responses that Kevin Spansky gave it was almost like he was saying no we're not going to bench him he's our quarterback but it wasn't like a very firm like he's my guy I love him he's my quarterback we're going to get this right it almost felt like if you could see through the bullshit he was trying to like cry out for help and the way he was saying it was like yeah he's my guy I guess like I, I got to make it work. Now, one big problem with the Cleveland Browns we've always kind of talked about is owners. Jimmy Haslam and D Haslam. More importantly, Jimmy Haslam. We've always said he puts his fingers into the game too much, and he needs to just keep his fingers over there, keep his grubby fingers out of the, the actual good stuff that's going on with this football team. Just when it feels like Andrew Barry, the general manager, and Kevin Spancy kind of had a system going. They had everything looking good. Uh, like I said, Haslam, they get involved, ownership, presidents, executives within the team get involved, and they start using like the analytics, and just everything starts going to shit. Moral of the story, what I kind of wanted to do in this, today's video is talk about all this, talk about all the news, talk about everything that's kind of going on, and then to discuss two things. Number one, is Deshaun Watson just a bust and he needs to get the fuck out? Do I think he needs to get the fuck out of town? And number two, what is the problem? Who is calling the shots? Who is making everything just seems so weird everything feel like kevin spansky is being forced to do this stuff dude could kevin spansky possibly get fired if he just grows a backbone and stands up to the executives there's a lot we got to get into so without further ado i'm gonna go ahead and stop rambling and i'm gonna get straight into this if you're going to enjoy as always make sure you're going to drop a like on this video be very much appreciative to do so but without further ado let's get into it Okay, first up, like I said, we're going to talk about Deshaun Watson. In this article, it kind of talks about, like I said, uh, with Deshaun Watson, how he's been struggling. And for some things we need to discuss. One stat metric that is used for quarterbacks, as we know, there's always passing yards, touchdowns, interceptions, sacks can sometimes even be used. 50-50, sometimes quarterbacks, sometimes offensive alignment are kind of the reason why those numbers are happening. One very important number that we can use as well, something like QBR, which is what we're talking about, and also another one is pass rating. In this scenario, QBR, the way we're talking about, Deshaun Watson has currently at the first game of the season against Dallas Cowboys was an 8.3 total QBR. I have seen multiple people on ESPN, Fox Sports, CBS Sports, different sports networks, all different types of shows asked about this. And they all, every single person, when they hear the quote of Deshaun Watson had a QBR at 8, 8, every single one of them is like, damn. Now, when we look on, back on Deshaun Watson, as we know, he was suspended. He had 11 game suspension. So far, at this current moment, after the Commanders game, we have had a total of a full 17 games, a full NFL season, 17 games. How has he looked in the 17 games? Well, as we can see, he's about 9-8 and eight in those games. He has a 34.3 total QBR. And I'm pretty sure I've seen somewhere, if I find it, I'll put it up on screen. But I'm pretty sure I've seen that he has like a total of like 3,700 passing yards total. And his touchdown to interception ratio is like 25 to like... 15 20 something like that i think it was really bad i forget the exact numbers if you know it good for you if i'll try to put it up on screen like i said if i find it now like i said a minute ago with kevin spansky and how i said i feel like he's defending deshaun watson but he doesn't really want to defend deshaun watson like i said he was asked after the commanders game and he was basically said uh is it how everything's going and what is the problem with the offense why isn't it working and he said quote this is not a one person issue on offense we have the guys we have the coaches we will get it fixed. Now, the two things that make this all funny to me as a Browns fan, not funny, funny, but like it's just painful funny, is the fact that we did everything to make this team Deshaun's team. As we know in the offseason, we let go of our offensive coordinator, Alex Van Pelt. We let him go. He, I think, is now the New England Patriots offensive coordinator. And as we see with the Patriots, they're no better. We went out and we hired Ken Dorsey. Is he a good offensive coordinator? I think he is. I just don't know what the problem is with Deshaun Watson right now because he's running Ken Dorsey's offense. He was with Josh Allen. Josh Allen had some struggles with him, but Josh Allen was able to overcome them because Josh Allen is Josh Allen. He's a freak of nature. He's a megazoid. He is a monster. He's an alien. And if Josh Allen is like an alien, uh, J Deshaun Watson is ET. Some other stats on Deshaun Watson, as we see, Watson's 21.0 total QBR this season through the five games is the worst among all qualified passers. His 20.7% off target target rate 
is third worst. And one stat I do think is interesting is, as you see, uh, he has been held in the held onto the ball for 2.95 seconds on average before throwing the ball. And I did say in a previous video, uh, I think whenever I reacted to the Browns versus Commanders game, I said if this offensive line could hold up for two to two and a half seconds, I feel like that's enough time to get a five ten yard route. These re receivers and even running backs, they run the forty time. They can run 40 yards in about 4.5, sometimes 4.4 seconds. Do the quick math. That means they should be able to run 20 yards in like two seconds. They should be able to run 10 yards in a second. This doesn't take long for these receivers to get open and do something, especially the guys that we have, Amar Cooper, Jerry Judy, Elijah Moore. These guys can get open, and they're getting open. Deshaun Watson's just not finding them. Now, remember the part where I said Deshaun Watson and Kevin Spancy, they're supposed to be like a bought in. They're, they're the bros. They're supposed to get this thing figured out. They're going to make the offense work. After the Commanders game, like I said, they were asking him. And even, I think today on Wednesday, they were asking Kevin Spansky about the scenario of benching him. And he was saying, quote, I understand the question. Uh, Ash here uh, from Pro Football Talk, Miles Simmons, asked him the question. And then Kevin Spansky replied saying, quote, as you guys know, I make decisions for our football team. But... I obviously consult with Andrew. We talk about everything that goes on with our football team, but ultimately it's my decision. Yes. Number one, I'm going to say this now. That's a whole lot of horse shit if you ask me. Now, do I think that Andrew Barry is calling the shots? I don't even think it's him. I think the way it's kind of going right now is Andrew Barry and Kevin Spancy are being told what to do. Like they had a system going for a bunch of years. They started to make everything work. As we've seen, they made the playoffs the first time they were with this team. They've made a bunch of different things work. Andrew Barry's rebuilt this team. Kevin Spancy had a great offense with Alex Van Pelt, even as him as the offensive coordinator, even though Kevin Spancy has been calling the plays. Now, taking a few minutes to kind of discuss some of the bigger issues. Like I said, ownership. One guy that's with our team, Paul DePesta, I think, or Dita, Dita Pesta, I think is his name, uh, our president of operations, our president, uh, like, within the team. I'll put a picture up on screen so you guys can see who he is. But if you don't know who he is, some people may know who he is. Some people might not know who he is. This is actually the guy, the real person, who was uh, Peter Brandt in the movie Moneyball, the guy who helped uh, Billy Bean rebuild the Oakland A's. Obviously, if you don't know who he is, you're probably saying, well, you just said Peter Brandt. His name is Paul DiPesta or DiPotesta. That makes no sense. In the movie, they couldn't use his real name, but obviously, that is the guy. That True story. That is literally him. He went from Oakland A's. He came over into football, and now he's currently working with the Cleveland Browns. And with him, when he was with baseball, he used a lot of analytics. They used math, a science, just the way of baseball. It worked over there with like the way these analytics are. Nowadays, everybody wants to use analytics, the way how everything kind of operates. That's the way it worked in baseball, and it worked. It, they did good. They helped the Oakland A's get to the playoffs a bunch of years in a row. The difference between baseball and football, football, you can't use analytics big time sometimes you can use the analytic for like going for two because you get a better opportunity later on in the game to try and go for the win sometimes other times they'll say like if you're like past 50 yard line you have a better chance of going for it on fourth and one those situations maybe i understand but the scenarios they're using right now is like i've seen like i said uh there was a report with mary Kay cabot where they were talking about paul de pesta and kind of the scenarios they use with analytics and they were saying I forget exactly how it went. I'm trying to find. I can't find it anywhere. But it was like going for a run play just doesn't benefit an offense at all unless you're going to get like seven or eight yards. And as we saw the past three or four years, they were very good at running the ball because they like to run the ball. Nowadays, you see like the Chiefs, they're running the ball and look at them still winning Super Bowls. Whereas the Browns, we went to a full pass offense and we can't fucking complete a pass. So what do we kind of have going on with the Browns? Number one, we have ownership that is controlling the team. The Kevin's fancy, the coach, can't do anything. And I'm pretty sure if he were to, like I said, grow a pair of nuts, grow a backbone, stand up to ownership and say, fuck you all, I'm going to do this my way, they're going to fire him on the spot and i think stefanski he wants to keep his job so he's like he's just doing what they're telling him to do so he can keep his job number two you have a quarterback that is ass and needs to get traded somewhere else and i've seen a report out there saying that the browns if they were going to give up had a trade val or offer from somebody that said i'll give you a seventh round pick a seventh round pick for deshaun Watson and a first round pick i'd make that deal right now take him away oh and then the third thing i forget if i even mentioned this uh with deshaun Watson being on the team and with the way how the team has kind of crumbled the past couple years nobody cares anymore Everybody, like I said, has checked out. They're done. Kit Coon, here we come. Because when Baker Mayfield was there, everybody was bought into Baker Mayfield. Last year when Joe Flacco got there, everybody was bought into Joe Flacco. They wanted to play for Joe. And as we see right now, nobody fucking cares about Deshaun. And I'm telling you right now, this year, it's going to be the worst year of Cleveland Brown football. Like, we are literally living in like the 2010, 20, two, early 2000s, early 2010 era where we just sucked, we knew we sucked, and it's gonna suck. But other than that, I think I'm gonna wrap up there. Hopefully you guys did enjoy today's video. If you did enjoy it, as always, make sure you go and drop a like on today's video. 
be very much appreciated if you do so. If you wanted to watch the entirety of today's video, thank you very much. And like I said, if you have a different opinion, do you agree or disagree with anything I said? Do you think Deshaun Watson needs to hit the road? Do you think Kevin Stefanski is being controlled by ownership and he's just being a puppet at this point? Do you think Kevin Stefanski is actually making these calls and saying Deshaun Watson is our guy and he needs to be fired if that is the case? Do you agree with my statement about how I said the team is just checked out and they're done? Whatever your opinion may be whenever it comes to anything you heard me say in today's video, go ahead and leave a complete opinion down in the comment section down below. I've been more than welcome to kind of talk about with you guys. If you're a fan of the content that I do poster and you want to go ahead and hit that big red subscribe button, feel free to do so. And don't forget to hit that little notification bell to be notified second to post. But without further ado, this has been Don't Talk Sports. Have a great day. Peace.